Today we're looking at a building pretty much from sea level to sea level, from 46 miles away. That building is Start Point Lighthouse, which is the lighthouse on the screen at the moment. Big, chunky lighthouse in Devon. We're going to look at basically some footage of mine shot from Lime Regis in the Cobb. Catch in Stock Point Lighthouse, an amazing 46 miles away. We're then going to use someone's photographs on Google Earth to help identify it as a cross reference, looking at the land and potentially something else. And then, of course, we'll look at the globe maths and see what's what. First, let's just have a look on the map, the distances and the target here. Uh, and where I am in relation to Stark Point Lighthouse uh, at Lyme Regis. Let's have a look. Okay, I'm essentially at the bottom on a, the Cobb, a place known as the Cobb in Lyme Regis. And my target is up the top there near Solcombe, Start Point Lighthouse, low level across a massive body of water, basically of a distance of 46 miles. We should be dealing with hundreds of feet of curvature here, supposed curvature. Now, obviously, we're dealing with something 46 miles away, low level from sea level to sea level over a body of water. So it's not going to be crystal clear which is why we're going to use cross-referencing on Google to help us identify. But the lay of the land is very revealing. And this chunky lighthouse that sticks out is very revealing. We're going to play some footage. I'm going to leave a link in the description to this original bit of footage. And I'm going to leave a link in the description to another bit of footage which is a little bit clearer, but I don't zoom in all the way back. I don't just come all the way back to line reaches of the Cobb. But anybody who wants to use this at this footage, go through it, use some sort of software or change the contrast to help identify things, help yourself. Obviously, it's my footage. Acknowledge that, but please help yourself. And you're going to see where I'm going, where I mention that in a bit. OK, but first, let's watch the footage. As you can see, the lighthouse, quite light coloured there. We're dealing with something 46 miles away. Incredible. you think it flashed then didn't it did i actually see that flash i don't think i've ever noticed that before let me just come back i might have been wrong Incredible. 46 miles back to Lyme Regis at the Cobb. Let me just let it play so you can... <laughs> and coming into the pavilion at Lyme Regis. Now, what we're going to use, first we're going to look on the map. I want to show my viewing angle in relation to the viewing angle of the image stroke photosphere we're going to use on Google um, to help identify and compare the lay of the land, okay? So let me first show you that. Bear with me. Now, to give you some idea, line of sight A is mine, 46 miles away. Line of sight B, which is the photographic evidence we're going to look at in a second now, 
is obviously coming from a little place in the cove there near Stark Point Lighthouse called B Sounds. We're going to have a look on Google Earth and look at someone who's kindly left a, some photography on there. And we're going to use their photography to help identify, OK? But what I want to show you is the change in viewer angle. I don't know, what's that off the top of my head? 45 degrees difference in viewer angle. And obviously, I'm 46 miles away. This chap who's viewing it above the beach here is three or four miles away, OK? So you've got a massive distance and, of course, a difference in viewing angle. So I wanted to give you some idea of what we're looking at, especially when I give you a side-by-side -side comparison in a minute, just so you can see, you can take that into account, OK? OK, we're on Google Maps. Obviously, you can see start point there. I want to come down to the angle that I discussed, which will be this chap here. So we're going to zoom in on here, this chap, to get our reference of start point and the topography there. What's the chap's name? Dan Butler. Thank you, Dan, for putting your photo up. We're going to help identify my observation using your photosphere. Now, I want you to take note of the lay of the land. I'm going to give you a side-by-side -side comparison. And I also want you to take note. Now, obviously, it's incredible in itself that I'm seeing the lighthouse from 46 miles away. That in itself is incredible. So to have any chance, and of course, I've spotted these radio towers, of catching these radio towers is, is pretty slim. But I've actually got a still where I think I've caught them with Stark Point Lighthouse in it as well. Again, feel free to analyse the footage, run it through, check the contrasts. I'm, like I said, I'm going to leave links in the description. Help yourself with that. I'm going to show you a still image in a minute, which I think I've captured the towers. I mean, to capture that from 46 miles away, to capture even the lighthouse from 46 miles away is incredible. Yet alone if I have managed to catch those radio towers. But anyway, just wanted to show you this because this is quite helpful. So now we're going to look at a side by side comparison. Now, this is a still shot from myself at the bottom of a distance of 46 miles away and a shot from Google of the chat we just looked at just now from three miles away. Obviously, as we I highlighted earlier, there's a different viewing angle, so we need to take that into account. Let me just zoom in, make it a little bit bigger to help us here. Now, to me, that's pretty much bang on. Obviously, there's a difference in viewing angle, and of course, we're dealing with a difference in 43 miles away. But I think those side-by-side -side comparisons are rather revealing. Now let's have a look at this steel shot where I think I might have got the radio towers as well. But bah, what an incredible observation. This is the still I mentioned from 46 miles away, which is why I say analyse the footage. Obviously you can see the lighthouse there marked. Now, have I caught the radio towers there? Is that what I'm seeing on the horizon? Possibly. Like I said, help yourself using software or altering the contrasts to help identify that. I'm pretty confident there that that is Start Point Lighthouse. Have I caught the radio towers? Uh, quite possibly. We'd need someone to run that through the contrast. Like I said, I'll leave the links in the description of some footage. Help yourself. But this is an incredible observation. Incredible. At 46 miles. Especially now when we compare. Let's have a look at the globe mathematics here. Okay. Start point lighthouse. I didn't realise I've been going on a bit here. Speed this up a bit. Tower height, 92 feet. Focal height, which is what we're after, 204 feet. So we've got that as a reference. Okay, Earth Curve Calculator. I height, 34 feet. Essentially, I've given myself 30 feet above the cob and a 4 feet for the camera tripod, being generous. Target distance, 46 miles. Incredible distance. We've calculated that. Target hidden height should be 1,006 feet. 
what was the focal height of the, the lighthouse? 204 feet. So essentially, the top of that lighthouse, according to the globe, should have been 802 feet below the horizon. That's ridiculous. To give you some idea of how ridiculous that is, let's have a look. To give you some idea of how ridiculous that is, this is the London Pinnacle Building, obviously in London. It's about 780 feet tall. 780 foot tall. So essentially, the top of that lighthouse, according to the Globe Mathematics, should be the height of this building, another, another 20 or 30 foot on top of that, below the horizon. Let's have a look. Over the height of this building, below the horizon, that lighthouse should be. I mean, that's ridiculous, folks. So to believe the globe, I have to believe that that lighthouse is refracting, projecting up around a curve that no one ever sees or can prove, and then is presenting itself as a flat plane. I also have to entertain the fact that water can bend, wrap and conform to the outside of shapes as well, when clearly that is not demonstrably true whatsoever. The globe is clearly ridiculous. I only use observations when they're backed by the substance. I, in this case, I'm doing an observation over the water. This observation is backed by demonstrable reality. All known practical demonstrations using the substance. I'm 46 miles from near enough sea level to sea level. The globe is clearly ridiculous, people. 